in the last video we played around with uh, getting the right name of the notes if we exceed the 12th fret or the first octave and i hope you understood and that you played around with it a little bit maybe in the console like we did before uh, but now it's time to move on because we don't want to, as I said in the last video, we don't want to start on a C and end on a C on the 12th fret, on the 24th fret, because that's not how you tune a guitar or any other instrument. That would be weird if all the strings in an instrument were tuned exactly the same. So let's try and see if we can do something about that. We need, we need some more data. We need to find out how a guitar is tuned. And I know that a guitar can be tuned many different ways, but standard tuning is usually E, A, D, G, B, and E. So we start from, from this one, E, A, D, G, B, E. But we can't really use those letters in our, or those note names in our program because we need to convert them into numbers before we can, uh, we can use them. So let me make another constant here. Let's just call it guitar tuning. And set that equal to an array. And we want to take, we want to go from the top down because that's how it works. That's how, uh, that's how we set up our HTML. So this is the first string that will be populated, then this one, then this one, and so forth. Um, so the first one will be an E. And if we go back here and if we count, so that will be zero, one, two, three, four. Then we can see that E is on the fourth position in both of these arrays. Doesn't matter if it's uh, sharps or flats. So let's start with the number four. So that should be equivalent to an E. So the next one we need is, uh, is this one here, which is a B. And I don't really have to count because I know it's the last one here. So that would be a uh, number 11 because we start from number zero. So I'm going to type in 11. And then the next one will be number seven because that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is a G. And that is this string here. So that will be seven and so on. So seven, the next one is two, the next one is nine, and the last one is four because that's the same note. It's also an E like the first and the sixth string up on the guitar in standard tuning is an E. So now we have that data. And if you remember, if when we build the fretboard, um, if you go into the elements and we open up here and we check it out, see what's going on. Inside the div fretboard, we have all the strings. And then we have uh, before and after the note fret, which has been um, styled. You cannot see it right here. But if we go back in the styles and we set this one to, to one again, you can see that we get the content right down here. Um, where do we have a D flat? This one, the, the before pseudo element on the note fret div. So this is the content that we want to change with every single individual one. Um, so inside our setup fretboard method, we are setting up each string here. And then inside each string, we are setting up the frets individually. And in here, we want to create these numbers. So we put up this data before. We know that the first string is the E string, and we want to start from four because number four is E, and that is the first string on a guitar. So in here, before we add the fret marks, I'm just going to add a few lines here because this is where we want to check what the name of that fret is. So in here, let's create another variable. Let's call it note name because that's what we're looking for. We want the note name for every single fret, note fret div. And we created this one down here already. So let's set it equal to generate note names. And let's run that. We should probably put a this on it. Otherwise, it doesn't know where it is. And let's pass in something here. We want to pass in... Well, first of all, we want to pass in the fret number that we're in. So first time it runs, it'll be zero, and then it'll be number one and number two. But if we do only that, we will get from C to C. But we want to start an E. So we want to use this one that we set up here. So we want to start at four. So guitar tuning, we want to start with that one. So, but first of all, we want to take 
let me make another parenthesis in here. And we have the fret. That's the one we're counting here. So we start on, on zero, and right now we're counting up to uh, to 24. So let's take fret. And we want to take this fret number, and we want to add something to it, because we want to add the number, the first number in this array up here, because that is the tuning that we're dealing with. So I'm going to add um, guitar tuning. And then we want, first time we want number 0, which is 4. And the next string we will take 11. And then we'll take 7. And then 2. And then 9. And then so so on. Um, so how can we do that? Well, we're already inside this loop here. And it loops over how many number of strings there are. And there are only 6 strings. So that is the same number we have in this guitar tuning um, array. So let's just use that. That would be pretty cool. So we can just use I. So that means that the first time it goes, it goes to check, okay, we're in string number one. Let's take number four, and then let's add that to the fret number that we're in. And then we're going to pass it to this that we, um, this method that we created in the, in an earlier video. And then we're hopefully going to get a result. And we also need not only that, we need to pass in an accidental. So we already set that up here. So we want to tell the program if we want to use the flats or the sharps array so let's just take this accidentals we are using the flats right now and let's use that so we're going to pass that in as well uh, right now i am going to right here i want for each string just to show you guys i'm going to console lock something here so i'm going to console lock string number and then let's just console log i. So for every string, it'll console log this. And then down here, I want to console log for every um, for every fret. And let's console log the note name. And that is note name. Let's. Check this out. Let's go back to our console and let's save this over here. Okay, so we start here. We get string number zero. Well, the first note name is E. That's this one here. That makes sense. The next one is F. The next one is G flat. The next one is G and so on and so forth. And then we continue here and we are moving on to string number one. And we know that that is uh, the B string. And we're getting that from here because that is the second one. And we continue to string number two and all the way up to, to string um, number number five, which is the E string here. So now that we know we can do that, we need to put them uh, into these dots here. A good way of doing it is going into every single, if I go back to the element here, and we go into every single one of these and we give it a data attribute of the note name because then we can grab that later exactly on that element and show it when we hover the mouse over or whatever we want to do. Right down here, I'm just going to delete these console locks again and this one. And then we're going to set a data attribute on every single fret. So we can do that by taking the note fret the one that we're adding here and we can set an attribute and let's call that data note and then we're going to pass in the note name and let's see if that works save that and do 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 we're inside the string here. Let's. There's something wrong here. I can see that. I should probably just uh, take some more spelling lessons because AET attribute does not mean anything. Okay. All right. Now it looks like something is going on over here. So let's check out the the first string here. We have a lot of note. We have this one. You can see when I hover over it, you can see which one is highlighted up here. That is E, that is F, and if we continue down here, open up the next string, let's open up the A string here. We can see that's A, B flat, and so on. 
looks like it worked. Let's just test if it works with uh, the accidental sharps instead. So let's go sharps. Save that. And we get, I can see already here, we have a G sharp and an A sharp and D sharp here. So uh, it looks like it works. But we want to add that to, uh, to the dots here. And to add the correct notes to the nice colored dots here is actually pretty easy. We just go to our CSS here and where we have this note fret before, where we set them statically to D flat everywhere. We just delete that and then we type A T T R for attribute. And what content, what attribute do we want to take the content from? And we want to take the content from the data node attribute. That we just added. So let's save here and keep an eye over here. I'm going to save. Ta-da! We have all the correct note names all over the fretboard. Let me show you. Isn't that wonderful? That's pretty cool. So we go from E up to E on the 12th fret and on the 24th fret. We can change it to to flats if we want that instead. Let me go to the JavaScript. Let's go to flats. And now it changes all the the notes to flats instead of sharps. We can we can say we only want 21 frets. And it looks like this, it still works. And we can also go crazy and say we want a crazy 36 string guitar. And we will get that. It looks a little weird, but uh but nevertheless, it is still the correct notes on the correct strings on the correct frets but um, we want to be able to add some interactivity to this fretboard so when you hover your mouse over the fretboard you will get the name of the note that you're hovering over and we might also add some other instrument presets so you can use a bass five string four string um, ukulele whatever uh, just so it's not only a guitar that we can use for this. But let's have a look at that in the next video. So hopefully see you there.